day one. He was 36. He was the paper's advertising manager and he knew the business. And he had a mind bent towards public service. On that day, Henry J. Waters III, known to all as Hank, would not only take over the family business, but he would write the first of what would become over 18,000 consecutive Columbia Daily Tribune editorials. A feat so rare that no one seems to know if it's ever been done before in modern American newspaper publishing. But then for Hank, it's appeared to be something of a love affair over the years. Fifty years later, he is still at it, putting out an editorial each day, obviously in love with the effort and what the effort is worth to the community, the only community he has ever known. Little did future generations of Boone Countyans know what this little fella's impact on his world would be. Born to Harriet and Jack Waters in 1930, the impish and sometimes honorary Hank was an only child. He played a little basketball, a little football, attended just one school for all 12 years, the university's lab school, and as a boy delivered the Tribune for three years in the neighborhood between Broadway and Ash Street and east of 10th Street. On graduation in 1947, Hank went east for college, but just for a year before returning to MU. In 1951, he graduated from MU Phi Beta Kappa with a degree in political science. May 25th, 1966, day one. At this point, Hank had already witnessed and been thoroughly educated in what it meant to be an excellent businessman, a community leader, an entrepreneur with vision. He'd seen it all in his dad and heard it all as it concerned his great uncle, Ed Watson, who ran the paper and wrote all its editorials for 32 years. Being an independent, local newspaper publisher and editorial writer, means you never have to ask permission about what to say or how to say it. But it is also putting your chin out every single day knowing you are going to confound or enrage half or more of your readers. It does take a lot of courage to write an editorial every day and knowing that not every one of them is going to be popular and uh, to have to interact with uh, people in the community on a daily basis and he's done that um, his whole life. He doesn't mind being criticized. In fact, I think he likes being criticized. Um, one of the things that really motivates him and really drives him is to be engaged in a discussion about something that's important. While a great many who have always lived in Columbia probably take Hank and the Tribune for granted, you know, just another part of life in our pleasant town, it's a fact that Hank is of an extremely rare breed. A man who couples excellent business sense, building a 46,000 square foot state-of-the-art production plant that allows the company to print the New York Times 365 days a year, with being a journalistic superstar. This member of the Missouri Press Hall of Fame engages and cajoles his fellow citizens in matters large and small, and in a way that a big city publisher never could, all the while being both accountable and approachable. You know, it's an art to, to deal with the public uh, when they call, and they usually call when there's something they don't like. Hank is, a, is brilliant. He's a master at uh, taking, he will never turn away a call, uh, whether it's, um, you know, somebody angry about something he wrote or about something that somebody else in the newsroom did. Uh, he always listens. He always gives them credence saying, well, you may be right about that. A Boone County Hall of Fame and Shriney is also measured by his or her charitable and volunteer activities. For 50 years, Hank Waters has regularly and devotedly provided his wisdom and his pocketbook to the Job Center, an organization he helped found in 1968, the Boys and Girls Club, the State Historical Society, the Columbia United Way, the Columbia Chamber of Commerce, the Planning and Zoning Commission, the Parks and Recreation Commission, the Stevens College Board of Trustees, the Reality House, and the Arrow Rock Lyceum Theater. Uh, Hank has been on the board of the Lyceum Theater 
since moments after its inception. I think he is, I know he is, hands down the longest serving board member, uh, maybe in the history of boards. I wasn't born yet when Hank uh, joined the board. Um, so he's, he's been with us for a while. And it is no, no overestimation of his efforts and his energy and his enthusiasm to say that the Lyceum Theater exists because of Hank Waters and continues to exist because of Hank Waters. Thomas Jefferson once said, if I had to choose between government without newspapers and newspapers without government, I wouldn't hesitate to choose the latter. Hank's entire working career has been devoted to that idea, that a well-informed public is the core of our democracy. Columbia and Boone County are better because of him. The newspaper that has won hundreds of regional and national awards is now transitioning its ownership. But its most important assets will remain in place. The entire newsroom workforce and Hank Waters as its editorial voice, heart, and soul. I think when he took over, he realized that that was a real, uh, a sacred res responsibility, a trust, and that he wanted to do his best to, to see that uh, relationship deepen and grow, and as the community does, so does the Tribune. I can't think of a more uh, deserving uh, individual to recognize with Boone County, uh, in the Boone County Hall of Fame than Hank Waters. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome into the Boone County Hall of Fame, Henry J. Waters III.